Hi, it's Money44 here and today I invite you to the review of the WE M4 Risk PCC replica. The replica for review was made available thanks to WE. WE M4 Risk PCC is a replica of the AR-15 rifle but after adapting to a pistol caliber, hence the name PCC, abbreviation for pistol caliber carbine. As some of you probably already know, it is a gas-powered red replica, more specifically green gas. What this means in practice, above all, greater realism. The replica is made of metal and its operation is very similar to that of a firearm. In addition, the significantly limited amount of ammunition, in this case uh, of this magazine's about 48 BBs, requires a completely different game style than in the case of AAG with midcaps. Before we go to the review itself, I have something to admit. First, I managed to break the replica to some extent. During use, I do not know if it was during normal use or disassembly, but I broke a piece of part responsible for locking slide in the rear position. I tried to fix it, but with not a great result, as I show you later. In addition, the replica came to me with a nozzle adapted for the Asian market and the muzzle velocity barely reached 200 fps, that is about 0.3 joules. I replaced the nozzle with a standard one, so that the replica shoots normally, which you will see when I chrono it, but keep in mind that the uh, results of chronoing your replica may be different from mine, because I am not sure if the same nozzle is installed in the factory for the replicas for the European market. Ok, these are the words of the introduction. In today's material we will take a closer look at the replica, see its performance and how it works and looks inside. But at standard, let's start with a small unboxing. In a grey cardboard box we will find a short instruction manual, the second wicker return spring, a simple BB loader, the key to disassemble the replica, LN key for hop-up adjustment, 48 BB green gas magazine, and the WE M4 RIS PCC replica itself. Let's take a closer look at it. The replica is about 77 cm long with the folded stock and 85 cm with the fully extended stock. It weight with the magazine is almost 3.4 kg. The replica is made of aluminium zinc alloy, aluminium steel and polymer. From alloy, among other things, we have the entire receiver or the transport handle, and some of the internal elements. The front and the stock guide are made of aluminium. There is some external elements and some internal elements made of steel. The adjustable stock and pistol grip are made of polymer. Going from the front of the replica, we first find a steel flash hider. After unscrewing it, a 14mm counterclockwise thread will be revealed. At this point we can also unscrew the extension of the outer barrel, so that after installing a shorter barrel, we can adapt the replica for Morse to CQB games. We can use the thread to screw, for example, silencer or tracer unit. The replica has adjustable sights in form of a vertically adjustable front sight, and vertically and horizontally adjustable side with two size settings. In addition, the entire transport handle in which the side is built in can be uninstalled, which will show us a standard wrist rail that allows the installation of other optoelectronic sides. Coming back to the front side, it's worth noting that its fixed base has a place for mounting a bayonet, and as you can see its rubby dummy holds up perfectly. Here we can also find a mounting point for attaching a tactical sling. Apart from the wrist rail on the upper receiver, we have the whole front ready for mounting additional accessories. On the front, we'll find the only markings on the replica. In this case, are the markings for mounting points, which can help to mount the accessories in the same way each time. The replica's body is devoid of any manufacturer's markings, which may be liked by some and not by others, but it does not bother me personally, and it even gives some possibilities. On the left side of the body you will find a single-sided selector with three settings – safe, single fire and continuous fire. Changing the settings is very clear and the selector is safe is quite stiff, 
which I personally think is a plus, because it's very difficult to accidentally change the fire mode. On the left side you will also find a working bolt to release. After firing the last shot from the magazine it locks the bolt in the rear position. After pressing it the bolt is released and the first BB from a fresh magazine is loaded into the chamber. This is how it should work, but because I broke this part this function itself does not work as it should. On the right side of the body you will find a standard magazine release. On this side there is also forward assist. What's very interesting, it's fully functional. And now we go to the most important thing, that is the bolts itself. In AAG replicas, the charging handle is only used to pull back the dummy slide bolt. For example, to set up hop-up. Here after pulling it back, we can see the entire bolt moves backwards, as in the real firearm. We'll have to make the same move each time we load the first BB into the chamber. In addition, after pulling back the bolt, we get the access to the hop-up adjustment, which is done using an alloy key we receive in the set. By tightening a small screw in the chamber, we increase the hop-up strength, and by unscrewing it, we reduce the power. The pistol grip, due to the fact that it does not have a motor, is much narrower than in the AAGs and resembles the one from real firearm, while the structure itself improves the grip and makes the replica handle very firmly. The polymer stock has 5 point settings and I will describe its fit as very loose. But it did not bother me when using the replica, you can always fix it with some tape. The side, the mag will looks like in any other standard AR-15 rifle and only when we will look down we will notice how it differs. Its shape allows you only to load a dedicated PCC magazines. The magazines themselves are made of metal and hold up to 48 BBs. A full gas charge is enough to fire all BBs. They strongly resemble extended magazines for GP cells, but unfortunately their shape is completely different and they do not fit GP cells. But also pistol magazines do not fit the PCC. Unfortunately, the magazines are dedicated and it's dictated by the fact that WE having a choice to redesign the entire bolt for pistol magazines or to redesign the magazines for the AR-15 bolt, choose the second option. It also means that the whole rifle has only a handful of dedicated parts and the rest is fully compatible with other WE replicas from the AR-15 family, which is greatly facilitates potential repairs or tuning, which I will show you when we disassemble the replica. The whole thing makes up a very solid construction that makes a very good impression in the hands. And only loose element is, as I mentioned, it, the adjustable stock. So what does the handling of the rifle looks like? It's very close to a firearm counterpart. The magazine loaded with BBs is inserted to the replica. We switch the single fire, pull the charging handle back and let go. What will load the first BB into the chamber and we are ready to shoot. After last shot from the magazine, the bolt will be locked in the rear position, informing us about the lack of ammunition. We will remove the empty magazine, insert the full one and release the bolt. Loading another BB into the chamber, we can continue shooting. After the game is over, remove the magazine, make sure the chamber is empty, release the bolt, close the ejector window, fire an empty shot and secure the replica. Due to the fact that the replica is gas driven and have a moving heavy bolt, it clearly kicks when firing. Gas comes out of the barrel and the ejector window more than once, which adds the realism to shooting from it. Along with the replica we get a second weaker return spring. After installing it I only noticed that the cycle is a bit slower and I read that the weaker spring is to reduce the consumption of gas and internal parts, but I do not know how true it is. We know how the replica is built and how it functions, it's time to see how it's taken apart. I will show you how to get the most important parts, that is the hop-up and the trigger unit. After making sure that the replica is empty, I start by removing two pins. The rear one. The front, they do not come out completely, so it's hard to lose them. I put the lower receiver aside, we'll get the barrel and the hop-up chamber first. I pull the charging handle to the stop point and then I remove the bolt. As you can see it's the same as in other AR-15 replicas by WE. Now I can pull out the charging handle. To remove the front wrist, first I have to unscrew this allen screw. The lower part comes out without any problems, but the upper one is held by the screw. 
now I unscrew the flash hider and then I can start knocking out 3 pins in the base of the front side. After knocking them out, I have access to the Allen screw, which I have to unscrew to be able to remove the base of the front side. Now I can pull it forward with the handguard cap. If I want to remove the dummy gas pipe, I would have to knock out the spin. The next one is the delta ring. I unscrew it with the wrench that we get in the set. When you put it back on, make sure that the cutouts in the spring and sagger align in the row so that the dummy gas pipe can pass through. After taking it off, I can pull out the outer barrel first. And then the inner barrel with the hop-up chamber. With this little screw, we adjust the hop-up setting. I found a lot of clearance between the chamber and the inner barrel. After unscrewing one screw, we have access to the inside of the hop-up chamber. This is what the chamber looks like inside. By turning the screw, we regulate the pressure on the hop-up bucking. The knob is made of hard rubber. And the bucking itself is made of medium hardness rubber and has a contact patch element in the air hop style. The brass inner barrel is 363mm long and it's in the GBB standard. We know what the hop-up chamber with the barrel looks like, and now it's time for the elements of the trigger unit. I will start by disassembling the bolt lock mechanism. To remove the main element, I have to unscrew one screw and pull the whole thing up. Here you can see which part was damaged. I tried to fix it by pouring some tin, but with poor results. Now I will disassemble the bolt release button. It stays on one pin that needs to be knocked out. Also, there is a spring underneath the button. At this point, the element that pushes the previous element up will also drop out. Another element I will disassemble is the magazine latch. To unscrew it, push it as much as possible and turn the latch on the other side to the left. Unscrew it from the button. After unscrewing, I remove the latch, button and spring. Before I pull out the fire selector, I first have to disassemble the pistol grip. It's mounted on one screw in starting the grip. As you can see, a spring protrudes from the grip, and in the receiver there is a pin that holds the selector in place and it's responsible for a clear setting point. It should also be removed. Now I can disassemble the fire selector. I hold the hammer and pull the sear together, thanks to which I can take out the fire selector. The trigger unit is mounted in place by the screw and this pin. After removing them, I can take out the trigger assembly, which as you can see is the same as in other M4 replicas from WE. So all spur and tuning parts should fit without modifications. The only difference is in the body itself, where you can see WE used a second valve knocker mounted in body to reach the valve and pistol magazine. Let's take a look at the internal elements themselves. I start by removing the small spring and the sear on the right side. Then I take out the pin from the auto sear and pull out it along with the spring. Next up is the hammer. and the trigger, which consists of two elements and a spring. The last part that I will remove is the valve knocker. I start by unscrewing two screws and taking off the cover. Now I can carefully pull out the knocker with the guide and spring. Let's see which elements are made of steel and which are made of aluminum zinc alloy. The trigger elements are made of alloy. The hammer is made of alloy and the roller is made of steel. The trigger unit valve knocker has a steel knocker and alloy body. The valve knocker in the body is made of alloy with only a steel pin. The body of the trigger unit is made of alloy. The only steel element apart from pins and springs is the out sear. Sorry, but I forgot to record it while disassembling the replica. Ok, we know how the replica disassembles and what parts are inside. 
Let's see what performance we can expect. I used WE2X gas for chronoing. I fired 15 shots and between measurements I waited for the replica and the magazine to heat up. First test on 0.28 gram BBs. The average power of the shot was 1.29 joules and the spread between the highest and the lowest measurement was 0.24 joules. On 0.32 gram BBs, the average power of the shot was 1.41 joules and the difference between the highest and the lowest measurement was about 0.44 joules. On 0.36 gram BBs, the average power of the shot was 1.5 joules and the difference between the highest and the lowest measurement was 0.45 joules. The rate of fire was about 20 BBs per second. It's time for a shooting test. I performed them on 0.30 gram BBs and WE2X gas. The air temperature was about 30 degrees Celsius. Hitting the target from about 30 meters is not a problem, but the spread is noticeable with successive shots. The situation is similar on 40 meters, hitting the target is not a problem. Hitting from 50 meters required couple shots, but after that most of the shots hit the target except for a few which were clearly overhopped over the target. Hitting the target from 60 meters also required a couple shots to aim in. The first shots landed very close for some reason. A hit from such a distance is possible but the trajectory of the BB shows that it's the limit of the range. So I will define the effective range of the replica at 50 meters and the maximum one at 60 meters. The replica was with me on two games, unfortunately I only have material from one. It was very good at it and I had no special problems with it. The distance at which I was shooting that day was about 20 to 30 meters and at this distance I had no problems giving even accurate single shots. If you are curious about this game, a link to it will now appear on the screen. WM4 Reeds PCC is heavy, well built and feels good to hold in your hands. The external structure of the replica apart from loose stock is really solid and when using it I did not have an impression that I was using a toy. The only thing that I do not like is the hop-up adjustment. Setting it with a small unalloy key through the shell ejection window is problematic, but apart from broken bolt lock element I do not have much wrong to say about the replica functionality. When it comes to internal construction it also does not look bad. The parts fit very well and I had no problem taking the replica apart or putting it back together. The only thing I do not like is the clear clearance in the connection between the barrel and the hop-up chamber. 
and the fact that the most important parts of the replica, which are susceptible to wear, are made of aluminium zinc alloy, making these elements of steel will definitely extend the life of the replica. Playing with the replicata clearly kicks when shot, is loud and lets out against clouds gives a lot of fun. The limited amount of ammunition makes it necessary to change the approach to the game and only shoot certain shots, and not spray and pray as much as with AAG. Also, the way that the replica works does not encourage such action, because if it a few shots in a row go well, I will describe the full auto mode only as a gimmick, because giving a short series ends with a siphon. I will describe the replica's performance well in the shooting test. 50 meters of effective range and about 60 meters of maximum range are rather standard for replicas with such performance. And during the real game the replica did not disappoint me and I gained a lot of frags using it. However, I cannot say about the dispersion during the chrono test, which were probably the largest I have seen in the replica so far. It is known that the green gas has its own rules and a certain spread should be predicted, but not so much. After saying all this, then for who was this replica made for? Certainly for people who are looking for something more realistic than electric replicas and at the same time something original and in the line of the current trend for PCC replicas. Using this replica is really great fun and the additional limitation in amount of ammunition and gas is a challenge forcing me to play more thoughtfully but I personally enjoyed each uh, shot with a single shot much more. I would even compare such a game to a bolt action sniper rifle game where you have to think over each shot. In addition, the replica can be an interesting addition to the collection of someone who already has other replicas in the AR-15 standard from WE. The well-known design and backward compatibility with parts is a big advantage here. Another type of user who may like not only this replica, but the entire line of gas rifles are people who shoot real firearms. The much similar operation of the replica to a firearm will make not only such people feel at home, but also a good platform for exercising outside the shooting range. So for whom I do not recommend this replica to and thus the entire GBBR family, certainly for people new to airsoft. Green gas replicas in our climate are unfortunately seasonal fun, and as soon as the cold eggs come, the use of such replica would not be possible to the power drops and instant siphoning. In addition, gas powered rifles are usually quite expensive, has expensive delicate magazines, and the operation itself is not the cheapest. I am talking about green gas, of course. With propane, it can be cheaper, but there are also other problems. What do I think myself? Well, I'm not sure if the GBBR is for me. I like to have constant performance regardless of the weather and temperature. And because I am a person with a heavy finger, I also like to be able to shoot series or several BBs one after the other. Nevertheless, the game with this replica was interesting. It was something refreshing for a weekend game. And it gave me food for thought when it comes to tactics and how I use the replica. But finally, I say that despite its unrealistic nature, in the long run, I prefer AAGs. That will be all for today. Let me know how do you like today's review and what do you think about this replica and GBBR replicas in the general. And for now, thanks for watching and see you next time.